Good afternoon, everyone. Ben here, and today is Wednesday, so we're going to be doing a presidential election prediction. And I'm going to get a lot of flack for doing this first, first for the, what my prediction is on this one, because the person I'm having, I'm, I'm analyzing versus Trump has a cult following. Um, it really is a cult of personality, I think. Um, but the other thing is that I don't think he, I don't think Bernie Sanders is going to run. Not that I think it would actually matter, but I don't think he's going to run for various reasons. And also, I think they, the Democrats just included new rules that exclude him from the primary, so he would have to run as an independent. Um, so I don't, and I don't think he's going to do that. Now, for what I've done is I've pulled up the Democrat primary to kind of illustrate my point. Okay. Uh, Clinton barely won Iowa, so we're not really going to count that. That actually shows he's somewhat popular, but not super. One, uh, one New Hampshire. Nevada, he lost in a close race, but not as... South Carolina, he lost by an insane margin. Alabama, and this is actually one of the huge points I'm going to make in this video, is that he needs to be competitive in a, in a, few, in a handful of southern states in order to win, and he just won't be because he's too far to the left to compete in these states. Clinton crushed him in South Carolina, Alabama. Surprisingly, not as much in Arkansas. He did very well in Colorado. In Georgia, he got manhandled. Surprisingly, in Massachusetts, well, Massachusetts, he was very close. Uh, Minnesota, okay, Oklahoma, he did well in the Great Plains, I'll give him that. Tennessee, he didn't lose by as much. Texas didn't lose by as much, but it's still nowhere near competitive. Obviously, he was going to win Vermont. Virginia, he lost by a massive, massive margin. Of course, he wants Kansas. Louisiana, he gets destroyed. He actually won Nebraska by a decent amount. Mississippi. He got annihilated there. Florida. He lost by a similar margin to Texas. Okay, and this is among Democrats, mind you. Shows you that not everyone in the Democrat Party likes him and thought that Hillary Clinton was just that much better of a choice. Missouri was actually very competitive. North Carolina was surprisingly competitive. Well, it wasn't that competitive. 14-point difference. Ohio. He lost by a massive, massive margin. And there's a reason for that. Ohio is very similar to the rest of the nation as a whole. It's, it, seriously, if you look at Ohio's demographics, its urban to rural uh, ratio is about the same as the entire nation as a whole. It has similar percentage. It actually, well, then again, it does have more white people than the rest of the nation. But overall, it's got a very similar makeup to the rest of the nation, so it actually makes sense to use Ohio as a bellwether. However, that's starting to be less and less true. Arizona, 15 points. He actually won these states, but those are states that are so Republican that he wouldn't be competitive there anyway. Alaska, similar story. Hawaii, well, that's a heavy Democrat state. Wisconsin, he actually competed very well. Uh, Wyoming, and won by a very large margin. Didn't do so hot in New York. 
Connecticut, he was competitive. Delaware, he was he lost handedly there. Um, Maryland was not competitive at all. Pennsylvania was not competitive at all. Well, actually, Pennsylvania was competitive, but he still lost by about 12%. Um, and remember, this is among Democrats. The only, I'm going to call it, southern states where he was competitive were West Virginia and Kentucky. He barely lost Kentucky, which is super Republican anyway, so it's not like it matters. And he actually won by a very large margin, West Virginia. Now, part of that is because of what Clinton said about coal, and uh, no matter how true it is, you know, that's going to hurt you in, in West Virginia. Uh Now, of course, the superdelegates, as we all know, those were going to go to Clinton anyway. So it's not like it actually matters. <laughs> but to look at just where they were doing, notice how in coal country and, well, actually in the mountains here, Sanders did all right, and in Kentucky he did pretty well. Same thing with Indiana. And he handedly won West Virginia, okay? But look at almost every other southern state. He gets destroyed. And I'm including Florida in this because Florida is traditionally part of the South. Even if Miami, uh, even if the Miami area doesn't, uh, doesn't like like that. Um, lost every county in South Carolina, every county in Alabama, every county in Mississippi. Lost essentially any parts of Virginia that matter, aka Nova, Tidewater. And he didn't even compete that much in uh, Southwest Virginia, coal country. Really in North Carolina, he didn't compete that well in a lot of places. And you go out to the Sun Belt, and he's not doing super well out here either. Yeah, he's winning Utah and Colorado, but he lost New Mexico by a very large amount. However, where Sanders did well is... Essentially, the Northeast, the Rust Belt, these two states, well, the upper Midwest, uh, he lost Pennsylvania, and the Mountain West, but there aren't that many Democrats out the, in this area, in these states over here anyway. There are a lot of voters who don't like the establishment, so that could be why, and that goes true on both sides. Now, this breaks it down by margin. As you can see, his worst areas among in the Democrat primary were in what's sometimes called the Black Belt of the South, right here along the Mississippi River, all the way up through this part of the, of the South. And I, I don't think this is really part of the Black Belt, but still. So, yeah, I'm not seeing where Sanders is going to compete in the South, and I think he would be able to turn off. I think he would turn off moderate voters in states like Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, the few swing voters that there are here, who want a more moderate candidate as their president, uh, in Florida especially, because that's essentially the old school mentality. You know, that's Florida has voters from literally everywhere. 
and it has very high populations of registered Republicans, registered Democrats, and there isn't a lot of wiggle room. But that's mostly because people who retire down there, not for the reason that most southern states are inelastic, which is because there are high populations of registered of Republicans and Republican voters and high populations of Democrats and Democrat voters because a lot of southern states have a very high population of African Americans who tend to, at least statistically speaking, I'm not trying to stereotype or anything like that, but they tend to vote Democrat. Um, and in a state like Mississippi, where the population is about 40% African American, I think it's like 38%, but we t but you round up a little bit. So it would be about 40%. So the Democrat there is going to start with about 40% of the vote in Mississippi. But getting above that is going to be difficult because the white voters in Mississippi tend to vote very, 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 very Republican. And we can debate and argue as to why that is all day, but that's not really the point of this video. Anyway... And you can kiss goodbye to Texas and Arizona if you nominate Sanders. So let's go with the states that I'm almost 100% positive. Oh, I'll put Montana. I'll leave Montana because Montana is a bit weird. Um, and you can probably kiss the second district in Nebraska goodbye because Sanders won't be able to appeal to moderates. You can kiss a competitive Texas goodbye if you nominate a progressive. African American voters might be turned off by Sanders um, because judging by primary turnout, and eh, Montana would be mostly safe. Uh, judging by primary turnout, they turned out for Clinton, not Sanders. Um, you can kiss Missouri goodbye. Georgia would probably be, I'd say, seven, eight maybe 9% margin for Trump. So North Carolina would be probably at around maybe 6% just because you're turning off moderates and maybe even pushing them towards Trump. Uh, for a voter like me who is in Arizona, very similar thing. For a voter like me who voted for Gary Johnson in 2016 and... I'll get back to that. And, uh, and Indiana can, is, I think it's off the map just because of Mike Pence. Um, so this is kind of, interestingly enough, this is the Romney map uh, for at least the Republicans. <clears throat> at least for me, as a Johnson voter in 2016 and as someone who doesn't really identify with either major party, nominating a progressive is a surefire way to get third party voters to say, and, uh, well, Jill Stein voters would probably vote for Sanders. Um, but Johnson voters, a lot of us would probably say something like, well, I don't like Trump. I definitely don't agree with him. But... It's better than having a self-proclaimed socialist in office. And I think that would be a pitch to a lot of moderates saying, hey, uh, you know we kind of fought an entire Cold War and won a Cold War so we wouldn't have to live under the Democratic People's Republic of the United States of America? or the Union of Soviet States of America, or whatever BS socialist name you want to give the U.S. Yeah, we kind of fought an entire Cold War to not have to do that, so why do you want a socialist in charge? Let's keep him out of office. That would be a very good pitch to moderates if worded better. Because moderates don't want something 
super far to one side or the other. They kind of want, eh, they want like an Obamacare, not a Medicare for all. They want tax cuts, but not super massive tax cuts. They want, you know, infrastructure spending, but they don't want, they, they don't want it completely nationalized, they want it contracted out, stuff like that. Most people don't want what Sanders is selling, at least in its entirety, or as, as Sanders maps it out. So he would have to moderate, and I'm going to give him credit for this, he is not the person type of person who is going to moderate for a general election. He's not going to make his He's not going to move to the center, and I'm going to give him a lot of credit for it because it means he genuinely believes in what he is trying to sell. It means he is an honest, honorable person because he is not willing to lie to his base in order to get votes and then sell that base out once he gets elected. Okay? And the other thing I want to give him credit for is he represents his constituency of Vermont very, very well. You know, I respect that. So I'm going to go through the obviously safe Democrat states. Um, I'm going to include Oregon as safe Democrat just because it's going out there. Um, Illinois, obviously. New York. Trump being from there, not having a New Yorker running against him. I don't think that's enough. I think most Democrat states uh, that are so, that are known to be Democrat would vote for him uh, in a heartbeat. So now we're back. So now we're on the swing states, and this is where Sanders' bad news starts. Colorado would be competitive, um, but I I think he would hold on to Colorado. Uh, New Mexico would be a little bit more competitive than in 2016. New Mexico Democrats weren't exactly fans of him, but I don't think it'd be enough to really flip the state, and maybe it'd just be people who don't like Sanders turning out that makes it more competitive, but there aren't enough of them to flip the state, similar to Colorado. However, Nevada would probably likely go to Trump. Um... Nevada is a little more conservative than these two states, um, and is also and there are definitely you know the twenty seven thousand votes that Trump could easily find there. So we're gonna give Florida to Trump pretty easily. Um, this is due to, again, primary turnout that Sanders had in 2016, indicating that he's not exactly popular amongst Southern Democrats or the type of Democrats that inhabit Florida. And that's what primaries tell you, is are you popular within your own party? In some places, Sanders is definitely very popular within the Democrat Party. Think the upper Midwest, which is where we're going to go next. He would probably expand the margin in Minnesota. I don't think he'd push, I don't think he'd get past a 5% margin of victory, but he would definitely expand it. Um, Michigan, he would definitely hold that by maybe 2 or 3, maybe 4%. Um, about a percent less than whatever Minnesota is. I think he would also be able to maintain Pennsylvania. Wisconsin would be very close, but for the sake of what makes the most sense, I think he'd be able to flip it back. But I was a bit more conservative than Wisconsin, and I think Trump would narrowly, very narrowly hold on to uh, Iowa. So now we go on to a few other states. I don't think Sanders would be able to pick up enough of the moderates that inhabit Ohio to flip the state of Ohio. New Hampshire, I think Sanders would carry the state of New Hampshire. I don't think he would be able to win back the second congressional district, but he would definitely hold on to the rest of the, he would hold on to the statewide vote. Um,
probably expand his margin in the first district, narrow it in the second, and therefore widen the the gap in the uh, in Maine too. So now we're down to the state of Virginia, and there's a reason why I went through the primary vote totals and the primary maps to show you why I don't think Sanders could carry a southern state. Because the South does not like Sanders. Or specific, well, it's not that they don't like Sanders, because most of us view him as a good person and somebody we'd love to have a beer with. And I'm not kidding when I say that. It's just we don't like his policies. And maybe that's partially me as, a liber as an American-style libertarian. But Democrats down here in the South aren't big fans of progressivism either. And I honestly don't think he'd be able to hold on to, say, a Loudoun or Fairfax County in Northern Virginia, which are filled with people who, up until very recently, voted Republican by decent margins. So they're not on board with what Sanders is selling. They want more of a Clinton-style Democrat. At least that's what they've been voting for. They're not on board with voting for Comrade Sanders. So I think Trump would very, 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 very narrowly carry the state of Virginia, because we also have to remember, Trump isn't popular here in Virginia. Not that he's super popular anywhere outside of West Virginia, Montana, and North Dakota, and Wyoming, but he has, but he's just not popular here in Old Dominion. Um, and I think if he were to, you know, so it would be a narrow victory for Trump, but it would be much harder for Sanders to flip a result in a state that actually matters. He would essentially have to pull off, it, definitely possible, Sanders would have to pull off Iowa and Nevada in order to do it, because I don't think he'd be able to flip Virginia. I really don't. And the whole reason why is because for as much as Northern Virginia doesn't want to admit it, Virginia is a Southern state. So anyway, this is what I think a Sanders versus Trump election would be, um, would result in. Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Bye.